Uh, hello, today I will talk about a paper published in Nature. Uh, the, uh, the paper is called Nature Speech Reviews the Semantic Map that Tell Humans Derival Cortex. So, uh, in this uh, paper, uh, some subjects are asked to listen to some uh, stories, and uh, during the uh, story, and they uh, are scanned with uh, functional MRI. Uh, so, uh, they want to know uh, for, for which part a uh, different kind of uh, objects or concepts uh, can be processed. Like uh, uh, in this uh, orange voxel, it is supposed to process some uh, position related uh, functions. So uh, when you hear the story uh, say the word about, and then the both signal in this area will be increased, like uh, in this matrix, it's 2.8 and when uh, the story say dance and uh, this both signal in orange orange voxel will decrease so uh, with the two hours story and the two hours both signal and we can regress out uh, the uh, the influence matrix so for the influence matrix for each column it represents one uh, voxel and uh, for each row uh, different word may modulate the both signal in that box. So, so after we get the uh, uh, influence matrix, and uh, we can do the validation. So uh, the subjects are asked to listen to another 11 minute story, and then uh, this semantic features, the story, multiply the influence matrix, and then we can get the predicted uh, both signal. We can also measure the uh, real vote signal and we compare between the predicted and the uh, measured vote, and we can get a correlation coefficient. And that can tell us if the prediction uh, is good or not. So this is the final correlation coefficient map. And we can see the yellow one that is high value, uh, that is in like a parietal part, temporal part, and also prefrontal part. And all these parts are traditionally uh, be thought as uh, some semantic processing regions. So that's to say, uh, this model uh, with the influence matrix actually can capture the uh, both signals for the semantic processing. Okay, so here is a uh, influence matrix, and for each voxel, there are totally uh, 985 semantic words uh, that can influence each voxel's both signal. Uh, there are so many words, so and especially all these words actually have some internal dependency with each other. So uh, the author uh, tried to use a PCA method uh, to get the principal semantic components, generally defined four components, principal components that can explain uh, most of the variance within uh, each word within the semantic space, and then uh, each word actually can be mapped into the uh, principal semantic space uh, as one uh, semantic point. And then there are totally 985 points in the space. And then he used the KME method to cluster the points into 12 categories, 12 groups. And then uh, the author uh, read the words in each group and gave a label to each group, like uh, the green part, uh, maybe this part, uh, the word maybe like uh, above, below, like uh, uh, general hospital, they all relate to location. So uh, they mark this uh, dark green as a uh, location label. And the social part that is uh, rendered in red, uh, that is uh, related, some words like uh, child care, some words like politics, these kind of things. In this part. So as we know for each work, so uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are contributed, the both signal are mod, uh, manipulated by 90, 985 uh, semantic words and these words can be uh, transferred into the principal component space and then we uh, render the first three components in red, green and blue. And then, so for each voxel, uh, can be represented uh, with the 
uh, three main uh, principal semantic uh, components uh, with RGB, and then it's a colorful, colorful map that represents different meanings. For example, here is a final uh, semantic map, a uh, colorful one, uh, that is for one subject. And we can see in the prefrontal area, uh, in the core part, they are red. That means you say red is uh, emotional and social, related to this kind of concepts processing. And surrounded the red kernel, uh, there are some uh, blue, uh, not blue, there are some green, green hues. So this works is actually related to visual tactile uh, concept processing. So that's reasonable because uh, when you process some social information, you need some uh, visual tactile inputs. Okay, and then uh, here are three uh, individuals, uh, semantic maps listed uh, on figure C. As you can see within each cortex, the color variation are quite big, but across subjects, uh, they have some similar uh, semantic pattern, like uh, this part is red, this part also red, this part also red. That means in the same cortical uh, area, uh, they process the same uh, kind of information. The red means uh, social. They process social related information. Also, this part green, this part green, this part is the same location, they're also green. So the author try to uh, get a human semantic tail atlas, like uh, for all the human, like a big sensors, statistics. The final part, uh, the tail atlas look like this. So to make this, you need uh, two kinds of very important information. The first one is the tail position. The second one is the tail color. The color actually represents the meaning of the tail. So the author proposed a pragmatic algorithm. This algorithm contains two parts. The first one is the uh, arrangement model, like this. Uh, this model tries to make the best uh, position prediction. And the second part is the, we call the emission model. The emission model can uh, give each tail uh, the best uh, color, that is the meaning. So after that, uh, you optimize the location and the meaning uh, for each tail, and uh, finally, uh, this map can best predict uh, for the uh, real uh, observed uh, semantic map. Uh, this is the final one, uh, look like this. Like you can see, this is the parietal lobe, and in the middle, uh, there are some red, and that means processing some social related information. Surrounding are some purple, that means mental related information. Uh, also some uh, green parts that is related to location processing. Uh, so this is the whole paper and I think the paper, uh, the most important thing is it proposed a data-driven functional MRI experiment. Uh, that means they need a subject to listen to a very long two-hour stories to accumulate the data. And it's quite different from traditional functional MRI that uh, they only ask the subject to do some like a uh, pinching task many times, and uh, this is a waste of time. But uh, uh, listen to a story. Story is uh, very rich in all kinds of information. So you can, uh, with so much so much information, you can uh, get a quite a good result on analysis. So the other part I think is quite important is because this method actually have a big application. So we can use functional MRI. We can use ECG, EEG. To measure some uh, brain internal states like uh, uh, the bold signal, like the blood pressure, etc., and we can also use some uh, apparatus like a retinal camera to record some viewer information. Use some sound recorder to record sound and temperature, etc. And uh, this paper provides a method to uh, make a bridge between the internal and external by the influence matrix. So in the future, if we get functional MRI data and then we can decode what the man is dreaming of, okay, even though he sleep. And also uh, we can use this method uh, to give some dumb people the ability to speak. 
uh, because we can get the functional MRI data and then we can predict what uh, the people want to say, like a Steve Hawking, and then we can let him talk. And then we can also know uh, maybe uh, what's his feeling, what's his motion, this kind of information. So I think this paper is very important. So that's why I gave this paper a public talk to the from rap group. 